In this video, we are going to focus on trend corrected exponential smoothing method, which is also known as HALT's method. So before doing that, I want to briefly talk about forecasting techniques. So in a forecasting technique that we consider usually time series analysis, we have two components for any observed demands, systematic component and random component. Random component exists because when we forecast something, there is always randomness and it's never easy to forecast how random it is. So, we, but we can always forecast the systematic component by analyzing the data. So we are given the past data, that data must have a level trend or seasonality so systematic component will tell us or we will tell in systematic component what kind of properties our demand has does it have a trend does it have a seasonality or none of them so in this example we are going to see a case where there's a trend in the demand so assume that we are operating a cafe at rpi campus and our coffee shop wants to know the demand for pumpkin spice coffee. So we have the data from last year, from September to February. These are the times that pumpkin spice flavored coffee is popular. And also by using this data, our goal is to find the demand for our next period. So the first step, if you look at the five steps on the right, first step is to plot demand versus time graph to see what kind of properties our demand has. So we go to insert, find our graph and right click on it, select data and our y axis is going to include our demand values. Select these values, demand, say OK. And my x axis is going to include my time period said OK and got my graph. So we see that there is an increase in the demand. So it goes from 88 to 140 by increasing in each period. This tells me that there is an increasing trend in the demand. Therefore, our systematic component now includes trend and level. For such cases, we used trend corrected exponential smoothing method because that captures the trends in the demand data. So the second step, we already did it, determined the systematic component by examining the graph and choose the right forecasting method. Like we said, trend corrected exponential smoothing is a good method to solve such problems. And the fourth, we use the formulas to fill out the tables here, and those formulas belong to HALT's method. So what we have is this initialization. So we want to initialize the level and trend values. Right now we have level, trend, and forecast values that we need to work on. So level and trend values will be determined based on a regression analysis. So we are going to perform a regression analysis on our demand data. To do that, I'm going to go to data, data analysis, and find regression here and say, okay. So it asks me what my Y range is. My Y range is going to be my demand values. My X range is my time period and I am just going to specify an output range so that it can locate our regression solution out there. Just select a random area and say okay. Okay, my regression analysis is now here. So intercept and x variable. This is what I am interested in. So the first value I have here is going to be my level and the second is going to be my trend. So I'm going to copy these and go back to my table and right click on this period zero row and select transpose. So I got the level from intercept value from here and trend from X variable. So I got the initial initialization part of my forecasting technique. So 
revised estimates for period T. So for each period, I'm going to apply these formulas to update my level and trend values. So I have my alpha and beta values. So alpha and beta right now are going to be our constants that we are going to use. I randomly set 0.2 and 0.3 values, but we are going to see how we can optimize those values. So now I am going to update this level value. So it is going to be smoothing constant times demand plus one minus smoothing constant times level plus trend from previous period. So select the alpha value, stabilize it by putting dollar signs times demand C3 plus one minus alpha. Again, put dollar signs. It's never going to change and times summation of level and trend from previous period. So level and trend. Got it. And trend value is going to be beta times level in this period minus level from previous period plus one minus beta times trend from previous period. So equal sign beta. Beta is going to be stabilized times level from this period here minus level from previous period plus one minus beta put dollar signs close to parentheses times trend from previous period over here got it so using the excel property i'm going to select these two cells and hold the bottom right and drag it down and excel computed all of these values for me and now I'm going to get my forecast values. Forecast value is going to be the level and trend sum from previous period. So for forecast in period one, we are going to get level from period zero and trend from the period zero and drag it down and got the solution. So my forecast is for period seven is 160. So this part here tells me for next period, so period eight, for example, how you are going to say, how you are going to compute it. So what we are going to do is we are going to select the level plus two times trend. Next one, level plus three times trend and so on. So if you want to compute more and more, you're going to just increase this coefficient by one and so on. So this is, it is given in this formula. So we got our forecast values and now step five, compute the error measurements. Why do we need error measurements? Because I want to see how well our forecasting technique did. So error is going to be found by the difference between the forecast amount and the actual demand. Going to drag it down and found all of my error values. So I'm going to talk about my error measurements, mean squared error, mean absolute deviation, mean absolute percentage error. And to compute these, I'm going to use some intermediate computations. So for MSE, I'm going to need the square of these error values. To do that, I'm going to select this cell and multiply by itself drag it down and got all of them. Absolute error value. So it tells me use the absolute value function and get the absolute value of the error. This is going to be useful for MAD and this last one is going to be useful for mean absolute percentage error. So it tells me find the absolute value divided by the actual demand. Got it, drag it down and done. Now I can go ahead and compute my error values. So MSE is basically the average of these squared values. MAD is average of absolute value of the errors and mean absolute percentage error is the average of these values. Okay, I found all of my values, very nice. So 
Now I can talk more about my alpha and beta values. So by using random alpha and beta values, I found my MSE, MAD and MAPE values. But you can tell me there could be a better selection of these alpha and beta values, how we are going to determine that. To do that, we are going to use Excel Solver. Go to Data, Solver, and we are now going to find the best possible values of these alpha and beta values. How are we going to do it? We are going to select one of these error measurements, say MSE or MAD or MAPE. Then we are going to say minimize this error measurement. And our decision variables are alpha and beta because we are going to find the best of those values and we are going to minimize it subject to alpha and beta are going to be between zero and one. Set objective. I'm going to say MSE is my error term that I want to minimize and select minimization here. By changing variable means Excel is asking me what my decision variables are. And I said, okay, alpha and beta are my decision variables. Subject to constraints. My constraints are these values are less than or equal to one because their values must be between zero and one. I said, okay. And since my objective is nonlinear because it includes the square of the error values, then I'm going to use a nonlinear solver and get my solution. Okay, solver found the solution, all constraints and optimal conditions are satisfied. I said, okay. So Excel solver tells me your best alpha value is zero, whereas your best beta value is 0.2. So what happened is my MSE decreased to 17. So before this, it was a higher value. So let's copy and paste this so that we can remember what value it was. Copy and paste. So I'm going to go back to my previous value, 0.2 and 0.3. Okay, so what happened to my MSC value? It is 23.5, whereas the optimal solution from Excel Solver got a solution of 17. So this tells me that my selection of alpha and beta values were, they were not really good. There could be a better selection of them and Excel found it for us. So I can get those values back by resolving. Yeah, these are the alpha and beta values that got us the minimum MSE value. So in this video, what we did is we looked at our demand data and said, okay, there is a trend, increasing trend, then trend is captured by using trend corrected exponential smoothing method, which is also known as HALT method. And then we applied that technique by using the formulas over here. And then we talked about how we can optimally choose alpha and beta values and saw how the MSE, MAD, MAP values changed.